buongiorno. First, I have to ask you one thing. I'm Italian, so please be patient with me. I'll move a lot, I'm loud, I move my hands, so sometimes I'll do like this. Please be patient, okay? When, when you're not, when you're getting annoyed, think, okay, he's Italian, that's <laughs> it. And we go on. Today, I will focus on something that is, uh, I uh, think really important uh, to share and um, I think the, a conference like this is really great because uh, teaching entrepreneurial skills is not f just for entrepreneurs. I think it's for everybody today in this world which is uh, so complex and so difficult and so sometimes uh, fast. Uh, having an entrepreneurial mind uh, is uh, important also for those who don't want to become entrepreneurs. And I really like the fact that uh, I'm talking to teachers. I'm very scared about it also, terrified, but uh, I really like it because uh, getting to teach an entrepreneurial mind and entrepreneurial skills uh, to young students, I think it's essential today. And I'll focus on a part of uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, not uh, marketing, logistics, organization, <coughs> etc. I'll focus on emotional intelligence. And I'll do with you a little test uh, just to understand how important it is. Imagine that you received uh, a post in uh, Hawaii for a year to teach there. And you have to find a replacement for you, for your job. You have to find a replacement for one year, then you come back. You have to write an ad looking for this person and you have to put the characteristics of this person. How would she be? Of course, you all thought, well, for the perfect candidate, she would be like me. Of course, the perfect. Since it's not you, you have to settle down for something less. But what would you write about the characteristics of this person? How should she be? Open-minded. Open what else? Loving chaos. Loving chaos, <laughs> okay. That's great. You just reduced uh, the number of candidates. Then? <laughs> what else? Flexible. Flexible. I can understand that. Huh? Creative, okay, with students that helps a lot. Diligent, Diligent. yes. Brave. Brave, okay, I agree with that. Everybody agrees with that. What else? Huh? Competitive. competitive, okay, competitive. What else would you write? Huh? Friendly. Friendly. Flexible. Flexible, okay. Do it twice because teachers have to. <laughs> okay, understand? Anybody else? Flexible again? Yeah? Putting ideas into practice. Okay, and many, many more things. If you notice, uh, what you just mentioned are all features of emotional intelligence. You didn't mention technical skills which of course uh, you took it for granted. They have to know how to teach, they, they, know how they have to know history or geography or IT, etc. But apart from that, uh, performance uh, and uh, performance in relationships uh, um, depends on our emotional intelligence, how we deal with uh, uh, complexity, uh, with uh, uh, our thinking style, etc., etc. So training a growth mindset is um, quite important today. Um, and uh, in a very interesting research from Carol Dweck, a psychologist in the US, uh, they saw, uh, they, they were studying students, little students, and they didn't understand why 
some of the little students, uh, the pupils they had at school, really loved to challenge themselves and when there was a difficult question, they wanted to learn and they wanted to try again and again and again, while others quit immediately. They didn't understand why, what happened to them. And they saw that there were uh, research after research, they saw that there was um, um, a pattern between two different kinds of people. Of course, we cannot divide people into two kinds of people, but more or less there, were, there was a pattern. The pattern was this. Some students had a growth mindset and some students had a, what they called a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset is based on a belief. The belief that the intelligence I have, the talents I have, the abilities I have are fixed, genetically fixed. So what I have is what I am, I cannot learn. <coughs> Imagine a person with this kind of belief. Would she want to challenge herself? No, why? Because I am putting at risk my being smart or my being intelligent. These kind of people look for approval. They don't want new challenges, actually they avoid the challenges. In a, a research from brain scans, uh, they saw that people with a fixed mindset shut down the brain when they received feedback. The brain didn't work. They, the brain started working when they gave men compliments, so they, gave, get, they got approval. A growth mindset people instead love challenge, so they welcome your criticism and your feedback and they focus on learning and not only on the results. And this was then seen also not only in students but also in managers, for example, or in salespeople. A salesperson that sells you by lying to you is a person that thinks, okay, I cannot learn anything from this, I just want the quick win. What they saw also in this research is that it's really easy for teachers uh, to foster a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. Of course, this is uh, a reduction of, all, of the whole uh, researches, but telling kids you're so smart, you're so good, you're so talented, showed that there was a reduction in the um, willingness of children to learn and take challenges because at that point uh, their being smart uh, was themselves. So if you give me a challenge and then I fail, I'm not smart anymore. So they saw, the psychologists and teachers saw that uh, instead they, they had to focus on the process. They had to say, You're, you've done such a great job today, congratulations. You, you did well, I saw you worked hard. They put the emphasis on the effort. And when they failed, they said, okay, you failed. Doesn't matter much, okay. What can you learn from this? And what can you do tomorrow to do better? They didn't put an end to the experience. They just said, well, today you failed. You, today um, it was too difficult, you couldn't do it. What can you learn from tomorrow? This helped them create a growth mindset. Growth uh, is risky. And risk is one of the things that uh, is usually um, combined with entrepreneurship. When we think about entrepreneurs, uh, we think about risk as well. And there is a misconception about entrepreneurs that entrepreneurs love risk. Not true, not true. I've uh, been involved in opening four companies and there were risks in all four companies and I don't love risk at all. Actually, entrepreneurs accept risk as a part of life and work very hard to lower the risk. Even people that uh, jump out of a plane with a parachute uh, don't love risk because they pack very well their parachutes, right? They love the adrenaline from the jump, but they will work very hard to lower their risk. So another thing that we, uh, it's important to teach and to um, train is the ability to fail. 
because we, when a thing that I don't like about most of entrepreneurship books uh, is that they tell you successful stories and they tell you how to succeed. But the problem is that uh, failing is much more difficult from an emotional point of view especially, a psychological point of view, because we take it personally often. So, our mind, you've seen this before, our mind is trained to imagine goals in this way. Yes, it will be a little bit difficult, but I'll manage, it's straight, straight ahead, just a little bit, okay, uphill, that's it. Instead, reality is much different, and our mind cannot imagine reality unless we have already experienced it. If you run a marathon, you know how difficult it is. If you haven't, you cannot imagine how difficult it is. Okay. When you open a company, you cannot imagine how difficult it is and how complex it is. In a startup, usually there are stories about parties and uh, how exciting it is, etc. Well, it's exciting. The, the, uh, a startup usually is exciting for four days in a row, the whole year. The other 361 suck. Expenses are getting higher, revenues are getting lower, uh, the sales manager quit, the client doesn't pay, etc., etc. So it's important to learn to train our mind to fail in a way and to set goals. You probably know the smart way of setting goals. Okay, goals have to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time-based. This is important because uh, often uh, we are not uh, very specific in our goal setting. But what is more important uh, is the fact that these smart goals will not work. At least, they will not work as we would like. So we need to train resilience, which is uh, the ability to get up, get up again after I fail. Resilience is trained by asking questions all the time when I meet a brick wall. What are the alternatives? What is the single thing that I haven't done yet that could make a difference? Who can help me? If I had already reached the goal, what would I suggest myself, etc., etc. These kind of questions help me train my mind not to stop when I, I fail, when I, get a, uh, I, when I go against a wall, and when I get against a wall again and again and again. Finding alternatives is one of the most difficult things, but one of the most essential today when students at university start in the first year having an idea of the job they will have in five years, and finish university when that job probably doesn't exist anymore, or there is another one completely different, or there is a new industry, and you cannot even pronounce the jobs they have in that industry. Exploring alternatives is uh, important, and the training, uh, when I um, deal with the entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, um, I see that there is uh, a problem between clarity of mind and the messiness of the, of the job of being an entrepreneur. Someone said before, the, uh, the, my, my uh, uh, candidate would have to love chaos. I can't agree more, actually. Entrepreneurship is chaotic. Startups are chaotic. Everything happens at the same time. We would think that uh, something happens serially. First I get the idea, then my business plan, then I get money, then I open. Instead, everything is all at the same time. So, we have to train entrepreneurs to do three things at the same time. First, the dreamer is there, okay, that talks about vision, that talks about uh, what I the world I want to build. 
But then uh, there is the critic. And who doesn't know the critic in ourselves? The little voice that tells us, you cannot do it. It's too difficult. Stop it. Let someone else take care of it. Okay, do you know this voice? Ever heard of it? No, never. Okay, <laughs> fine. Entrepreneurs have to train dreamers. The critic inside themselves has to uh, lower its voice, even though it's still important because uh, it can give uh, entrepreneurs uh, warning signals. I've seen many entrepreneurs that go against the wall, even though there were signals that told them that was not the right direction. And being a realist uh, is the most difficult thing because we all have filters when we see reality. Today we are 100 here, probably more. We, have, we will go home and talk about this event and we'll talk about it in 100 different ways because we have filters, we see, we notice things difference, differently and we interpret things differently. Avoiding thinking traps is the consequence of this. We overgeneralize sometimes, we read minds of people. Huh, you're angry with me, you didn't say hi this morning. Never done it? I'm sure you never done it. Okay. Today I would like to focus on one of these thinking traps that I've seen in many entrepreneurs. Belief. One of the reasons why 50% of all startups fail is that we believe, entrepreneurs believe in their ideas. And you say, what, what do you mean? They, they should believe in their ideas. The problem is that if we believe in something, think about it, if we believe in something, it means that we don't know it. Because if we knew it, we wouldn't need to believe in it. I'm 178, my wife says it's not true, I'm 176, but I'm sure it's 178. And I don't believe I'm 178, I know. I'm that tall. If you believe in your idea, it means that you don't have the answers. You're just believing, you're hoping it's true. Beliefs are our reality. We all have beliefs about um, how to dress, how to ra raise kids, how to teach entrepreneurship, how to treat uh, uh, students, how uh, to uh, go to work, etc., etc. We all have beliefs. And we treat beliefs as our own reality, even though they are not reality. They are just uh, our alternative of reality. This is funny. These are some products that, that were sold in the 50s. A, ladies and gentlemen, you have radioactive toothpaste for whitening your teeth. <laughs> then I would like to uh, present the radioactive cosmetic products, especially lipsticks to make your uh, lips shiny. And uh, the best is radioactive chocolate that makes you younger. That's what the ad said. Now, we laugh about it, but 60 years ago, this was normal. Why? Because they believed. There was a belief. Today, we know this is not a very good product. So, testing your belief in an uh, as an entrepreneur is essential, and often entrepreneurs uh, fail to do it. The usual way of starting a company is this. You have an idea, you write a business plan, you launch, and then you get the results. And then, when you're already spending money, something goes wrong and you have to take uh, away all emergencies and problems. It's like uh, failing to maintain your airplane and then when the engine breaks down, you try to repair it on flight. Today, there is what is called Lean Startup 
program. And uh, it's a new way of doing business because uh, many venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, especially in the US, saw that business plans uh, didn't work very well. So what they did was uh, train people to sell before they launched a product, sell before opening a company. In this way, you have all the information you need from the customers. They didn't like this feature. They, they liked this feature very much. They, uh, they told me to uh, raise the price or lower the price, etc. You don't have to believe in your product. You know your product is going to work or not. You have to teach them to, entrepreneurs have to learn to ask questions. Entrepreneurs usually ask, do you like it? Do you like my product? And would you buy it? The conditional is very easy to answer because you don't have to fork out 400 euros for a product. It's conditional. Yes, I would. If you sell before launching, you ask questions about the past. Have, have you uh, used this product? Have you had problems? What kind of problems you have? In this way, people, entrepreneurs, learn to deal with reality and not their beliefs. Because an entrepreneur is in love with his product, so she will never criticize it. Let our customers do the job for us. Motivation, well, um, why do people become entrepreneurs? Some because they want to get rich, extrinsic motivation. Some because they want to be free, extrinsic motivation. Some because they hate their boss. Some others because uh, they want to change the world. Helping people decide why they want to become entrepreneurs is important uh, to make them then take the challenge. When uh, we challenge people and we challenge uh, our students to become entrepreneurs, we should find the way to motivate them so that they can make mistakes even though they, go, they don't panic, they don't go into an anxiety loop. And then there is the part of ambition. Entrepreneurs are usually ambitious. That's, it, that's at least what they think about them. Ambitious in, is important strategically also, from a mindset point of view. Not, it's not a pep talk, it's not a motivational talk. It's strategic because uh, when you are ambitious, you have a vision that uh, goes over all your goals. And it is important because um, there is what we call, what in, uh, um, in uh, when what pilots call crabbing. Crabbing is a technique in pilots uh, that helps them go against uh, the winds that try to push away the plane from the landing. What they do sometimes is that they have to push a lot more than they should do and in a different direction to land properly, because the wind is pushing them away. <coughs> Entrepreneurs have to learn to do crabbing as well in real life, because there are so many winds that go against ourselves every single day in our life. So we have, being ambitious is strategic, because it means that uh, sometimes we have to train our mind to say, okay, now I have to push really, really hard. These are some questions that uh, are used to train people to be ambitious, meaning to be strategically prepared for complexity, for problems, for the winds in our life. I will not read them all. The first one is the most important. How can you progress by 1% today? Challenging people to fail and making mistakes is the best way to training them to fail in the real life because they're used to it. Failure is not a big deal. They learn that failure is not a big deal. It's not about me, about my personality, about myself. It's about m having a wrong strategy in the right time. Last one, focus. I've seen many entrepreneurs, I've heard many entrepreneurs say, there is a market for 
pens. In Europe, 300 million people use pens. They use 10 pens per day. It's 3 billion pens per year. How hard could it be to get 1% of the market? I will be a millionaire by the end of the year. How hard could it be? I've heard it over and over again. I actually, in fact, I've done it myself. The fact is that it's really hard to get that 1%. Actually, it's really hard to get the 0.0001% of a market. So focusing on a niche uh, of which we are passionate about uh, is really important at the beginning so that we can start growing and knowing our market and uh, knowing that uh, we can grow later on and starting to build a fan base of people that can teach us what we're doing wrong. And this is my final message for you. I think uh, I, I'll, I'm also a teacher, by the way. Um, and I, I believe that the teaching is the most important job in the world. Sometimes we have to be flexible. I don't know if you've heard it. <laughs> Very flexible. And um, what we do today with the leadership and uh, entrepreneurship is uh, teaching our students to leave their mark in the future as people. And uh, for me, leadership uh, is uh, leaving mark every single day for every single gesture, for every single relationship, every single moment, especially in the difficult ones. So teaching our students to focus and uh, uh, perform in difficult moments uh, helps them become the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you very much.